Merlin 3D, a new dimension of network magic. Hey everybody, my name is John Capobianco and what I'm doing today is working on transforming the show IP interface brief command, which is a Cisco CLI command, into first with PyATS transforming it into JavaScript object notation and then I'm going to run it through a Jinja2 template to make an array of arrays from that JSON that then Blender can use um, as an index to present 3D versions of the JSON. It might make more sense. I'm just going to share my full screen today. So there's a, a few moving pieces here, but I have this Python code that runs PyATS and for every device in my test bed and my test bed only has one device in it this Nexus 9K in the sandbox we'll go ahead and connect to it and then parse the show IP interface brief command I'm going to print that on the screen so we'll see what that looks like I'm also capturing the date and time and I'm going to print that and then I'm going to run the JSON through this um, Jinja2 template and print that on the screen as well. And I'll also show you what the output looks like before we move into the Blender world. Now I've moved all of this into a Docker world, a Docker container, which I've just built. And let's bring it up in a Docker container to refresh our data set. So this is the PyETS connecting to the router. It's going to run the show IP interface brief command and return JavaScript object notation. So there's a little bit going on here. This is what it looks like originally. And then this is what it looks like um, after I have put it through my own template. It's also easier to look at it here. This is what I have, an array. I could actually do this to make it easier for you to see. It's an array of arrays and inside I have comma separated values inside of quotations that are all of the different pieces of information from the show IP interface brief command. Now this doesn't append to this, it's a one-time state capture that then in Blender we can visualize. So in Blender, we're going to look at this in a second. I have three simple objects right now. I have a link to this interface object that I've made, but I, I can't manipulate this. This is a link to another Blender file. So what I've done is made what's known as a proxy version that I can manipulate. I also have, so far, this text um, object. All right, so that's all that I have so far and I will bring up the animation node and hide these objects again. Now in my animation node, I'm going to show you the link to the Python. That JavaScript file I just showed you, I'm loading it in Python. So I, I don't even need requests anymore. I'm not using requests. Let me get rid of that uh, and save this. So I'm opening the JSON file and, I'm, and then I'm loading it into this variable. I'm printing it to make sure that I know it works inside of my Blender space. And you can see here, it's printing that array of arrays. And now it's a matter of picking out these fields. So the first field is the actual interface. So I'm going to change the text to that interface label. I also want to iterate for every one of those interfaces you know, create copies of those objects that I showed you to begin with. So here is the script. We make a script and this is very important that this here matches the variable name here. Okay, that is our link between these two worlds, that this script here. So then I invoke it as a subprogram. So now that we've invoked our subprogram, you can see show IP or IP interface brief here. We have to make object instancers. And you can see that I'm picking right the 3D interface and the interface name text as the things I want to instantiate. And I'm going to instantiate them in a loop. 
So that way I get one for every one of the copies in the JSON. Now down here, all I'm doing, I don't want to say all I'm doing, but what I'm doing is manipulating the location, right, with an object transform output. And I pick the object and the location in, these, in this case. I also hard code some values in here to adjust where I want them to be. So let's run this little um, node tree and there we have the dynamic interfaces and their labels in th full three dimensions. Pretty neat, right? So now what I my next step is going to be getting all of that information behind it and it's a bit of an optical illusion from here it looks like a flat a flat plane but if I tilt it to the side I actually have a gap here whoops didn't like that yeah I actually have a gap between them they're not actually lined up as you can see from the overhead right so I can play with the optical illusion of making them appear flat from straight on or making them appear um, in line, right, like this. So we get to play with the, the user's perception of this, right? That looks flat, but it's actually not flat. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to continue to add labels, and once I feel I'm comfortable enough with the process, I'll try to record adding a set of data. Let me give it a dry run and then I'll try to cover it from start to finish. Hello everyone. I'm going to attempt now to add more data from our array of arrays. We've added a few of the indexes. I've done one to practice and I'm going to try to record one to show you how we can build from dynamic network state information and transform it into 3D objects in Blender. Now bear with me and I'm going to save quite frequently <laughs> in case I get something wrong. But right now I have, and if you look at it from a flat plane, they kind of look like they all line up, right? So I'm going to put, if you can imagine in your head, beside the IP address, the actual IP address. But if we swing the camera, they're not all quite in line, right? We actually have this three dimensions. So I've decided to move the, the interface, and it's not just VLANs. There's also a loopback interface down here and a physical interface down there. So um, let's try to add the IP address. So what I need to do first is shift A and add text. So now that we have a text object, let's go ahead to the properties of the object here. And we're going to give it a proper name, IP address a value to distinguish it from our IP address label. Where did that go? Oh, I added it. I don't want it there. I want it here in the collection. Sorry, I may have added it to the wrong place. Text. There we go. And now I want to make sure it's called IP address value to distinguish it from label. And we will change some of these parameters, but for now we're just going to hide it. And now we have to instantiate it. So what I'm going to do is create an object instancer to instantiate a certain number of copies, meaning a copy for each set, each array of arrays in the JSON. So copy, control C, control V to paste, bring it up here. And now in here, we want to say IP address and we want value. And now we just plug it into our data. So now you can see it there, it just says text but I've created eight instances of it. So now we have to deal with it. So what we want to do next is to make it available to our sub program. So we're going to go into our for loop here and make a new iterator. And this is going to be objects. And it's going to be called IP address values. And now up here in the sub program, we can see we have a new entry where we want to connect our instantiations to there. All right. So now let's transform it with an out object transforms output to change its location, its rotation, and its scale 
as well as the value of the object itself. All right, so we're going to copy one of these and paste it and drag the copied, whoops, control C, control V. We're going to drag that down there for now and we need to transform the object. So let's start with the object. Now you can see the other ones have a combined vector from math from the index. Let's do that first and place the object on the map. So we're just going to do this. We're going to, well we need the object first and the object comes from the actual object. Let's connect the object and then we'll, we'll deal with the text after. So that's the object and you can see right away it, it adjusts itself vertically to the transform which has a 90 degree X rotation. So we're real close, that's good. So now let's, let's change that with a combine vector. So we're going to move a combine vector in to the location and then we're going to take a math node and connect that into the X location and then we're going to connect the index into the math node. So now, now, and let me save, let me save right here since that's working, I'm actually going to save a backup copy as well. All right, so now we have the text on the screen and it's in a sort of not bad location we're going to deal with that. So let's deal with that before we deal with anything else. And it's pretty much where we want it. Um, we just got to make it a little more puffy, three-dimensional, and adjust where it sits underneath the... So we want to go to our parent object now, not the instantiations. And let's take a look at the other... Um, so we're going to go here to the actual font, the object data properties. And the label has 0.25 and 0.5. All right, so 0.25 and 0.05, and this was 10. And let's change the font as well to our Futurama bold. And then let's render it. And we just have to click the deep copy on and off. And now it sort of looks, yeah, that looks good. Now let's deal with the location and it's just center and center here and we'll do that again so now it's all in line now let's offset it a little bit let's move it over just a little bit so with the offset let's try two and then render it again yeah I like that that looks good from a flat plane IP address is maybe a little far over let's bring that back in to say minus two and re-render it. What does that look like? Address label, right? Minus two. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong box. Haha, <laughs> there we go. How about that? And I should add to this IP address maybe a colon. So I'll do that in the JavaScript and where to fix that is in the Jinja template. And in the Jinja template, where it says IP address, ugh. so let's give that a colon. There's another one in here, I'm sure of it. IP address right there. Let's get those colons and save that file. And all we need to do is rerun our Docker container here. Let's rebuild it and rerun it. And this is a good demonstration of the, the dynamic nature of that and the programmability here. All right, so that's done. And now in theory, if I rerun the node, it should just, yeah, <laughs> there's a colon. All right, so now um, I sort of spread those apart a little bit too. Let's do that while we're here. So under the label, word spacing is one. 
Yeah, I have one, two, five. Let me copy that and do that for both of these as well. And now let's re-render everything. Okay, that pushed this over a little bit. So we have to offset them a little more. So do minus three. And then for this one, let's do three. And let's re-render. That looks really sharp. All right, now let's plug the IP addresses in. Again, John remembers to save everything. <laughs> All right, let's try. <laughs> Let's try to get the text in. Now I'm going to try to follow one of these other objects like this IP address. I have it working, right? So we have the locations fine. Now what we need to do now is run the text. See the object here? The object comes from the object and the text comes from the data index. All right, it should be pretty straightforward. So what we need is a text object output, which we're going to put in here. So far, so good. And now we need a list element, and we want to make this a generic list. And we're going to take the data into this list, and set it to index 2. All right, and now the element looks like it just gets connected to the text of this text here. Hey, look at that! Look at that! Start to finish. Now we need to spread them apart a little bit. That's not a big deal. We're going to just go to the label here and offset it by 4. And this label and offset it by 4. See if that's enough. In our rendering up here, let's give them another check, check check one two and uh, all right now these are getting a little close so we're gonna have to spread every unit apart a little bit more but that everybody is how we can make a text object dynamic from right both the location horizontally vertically and on the Z as well as the actual value of the object pretty neat stuff. Hey everybody, I thought I was done, but I thought I would show you one more and to show you the power of repetition and practice and failing and learning and really doing things over and over again. So I'm going to go back to the view here and let's go ahead and add the timestamp value. So I have the timestamp labels. This is really coming together nicely with the IP address and now the status and the labels. I've added the timestamp label but I'm started getting the hang of this. So we're going to hit Shift A and do text. And we're going to give this a name under the object. And this is going to be timestamp value. And then we're going to hide it. We're going to come back to it. Don't worry about that. But for now, let's create our instantiation. So we're going to go in here. We're going to copy an object instancer. We're going to change the instancer to timestamp value. We're going to plug it into our data set. Uh, I got to, yeah, plug it in here. And now we need to add it to our for loop, our ever growing list of for loops. So we need a new object list. And we're going to call this timestamp value. Now this should add it to our sub program invoke. Yeah. And now we connect in the objects in here. So now we're ready to manipulate the object with our growing list of object transform output. So we're going to make one new of these. I'm going to drag it down here. And now <clears throat> right away I'm going to work backwards from the combine vector for the location. And I'm going to use the math node into X. And this is just to spread it out evenly. So now I need this gets a little tricky here, right? I need the index in here. 
Did that go to the right spot? No, let me just move that there. Index to multiply, and that's connected to the right thing. I hope. Yes, to the index. All right, so now we have to connect the object, but before we connect the object, we're going to transform it and add the text. So we're going to create, copy this text object output, connect the object into the object, and now we have to connect the object as well as the text. Okay, so we're going to get a list element and make sure that this is of the type generic list. Connect in the element to the text. And we want element 6 now. We increment by 1. And this gets connected into our data. So I need to get, see it's red here indicating that's the one there. And now I should have transformed the output, but I need to plug the object in here. Right, so let me just bring this over here so I can do that. This bottom object, the newest one, into the object here. And now, now it's on the screen and we can deal with it. You might not see it, but there it is there. Our timestamp. So let's make it three-dimensional and deal with it like the rest of these objects and offset it and all the rest of it. So let's try to get a good viewpoint. We're done with our animation nodes for now. It's just about the presentation of this. And now let's make it the same of all the other ones. So we have our timestamp value and we want to make it... We need to go to our here, the properties, and let's start at the top. So we have 0.25.0510. So 0 0.25, 0 0.05, 10. We want to change our font. And because this is time, let's use the alarm clock font for this one, just for fun. And then we're going to center it and center it. Now, I don't know how much to offset it yet. It looks like a little bit to the X. So let's offset it by one for now. Now let's see what that looks like. I'm not quite done with this because I need to click on the deep copy button here. So let's just, okay, so that's looking better, but I need to offset it by quite a bit. So let's try three, a little more, four, uh, even more. What's protocol offset by eight? So let's try eight. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I want this one. And this to be 8. Okay, that's too much. See, it's just a little bit of a guess there. 6 is good. And let's move timestamp over just a little bit that way. Let's say minus 4.5. And that should be this one. Uh, that's a little much. Let's do 4.25. There we go. So now, and the timestamp is in the nice alarm clock. And I think we have to spread out our letters a little bit. If I go down here to the, yeah, letter and word spacing. One, two, five. And now for the time, I'm, okay, now I need to offset it more. And let me make this 0.5 maybe to make it a little smaller. Can I do this even easier with maybe zero? Let's say minus one. I guess I can't do minus. All right, well that's fine. And then I need to, the character spacing is good. What about the line spacing itself? Does that affect anything? No. All right. Well, I need to adjust the offset a little more now that I've changed the spacing. Let's do 6.5. Pretty 
pretty good, not perfect. We can do it a little bit more, maybe six, seven, six, seven, five. There we go. It's pretty close, pretty close to perfect. So now we have our timestamps. So there's only one left, and I've done this custom. Let me show you my Jinja2 template. So what I do is evaluate if the status equals up, 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 then change it to healthy. Otherwise, make it not healthy. So that will be the next one that we add. And there's just two more. There's the label and the data. So once I've done that myself, I'll come back to it. I just wanted to share how easy this is begin becoming now that I've practiced and practiced and done it a lot.